does much of the character come from you yourself or is it all there in the script? Um, well, I think... Oh, half and half. And especially when you're working on something for so long that you have to rely on parts of your personality, especially when you don't necessarily have a lot to do and you just have to make it interesting. But, um... Well, personally, I, th I think I'm a lot different. But, you know, just small parts of yourself that you accentuate. I don't give a stuff what you wear. The people around here, they're kind of narrow-minded, you know. Initially, Home and Away, like Neighbours, suffered poor ratings. So a new production team revamped the show, introduced more young characters, and gave them even greater prominence. I'll get real. You're just as daggy as the rest of them. An important link between the old and the new concepts was provided by the formerly recalcitrant Bobby, who, older and wiser now, was promoted to run the cafe and, as an adult, to put down the young in her turn. Tell us a little plan didn't work. You know, you're not worth talking to, you moron. You know, the, the bottom line in, in, in making television is that you have to find your market and make your program to, a, to appeal to that market. And that's what we did, blatantly. We, uh, we conducted extensive research um, based on, uh, on the program that we inherited and what we felt uh, was going to, the sort of program that was going to uh, increase the, uh, the audience. And uh, we basically came up with the style uh, and format of the program which, which uh, we're now making and which is now doing very well. The market dictates that we have to basically form the program to the likes of, of the kids out there who are watching television at that time. A lot of the stories revolve around school. Right, uh, before we start the lesson, I'd like to introduce you to Emma Jackson, who'll be joining the class today, and I'd like you to make her all welcome. You can take that desk over there. One of the new cast members is Danny Minogue, sister of the terribly famous Kylie. A shrewd career move. Danny also aspires to a singing career and can use the exposure a soap provides. Emma Jackson is nothing like me. She, I mean, she had a lot of things about her that I liked and a lot of things that I didn't like. She is probably a character that a lot of people can relate to and she was good for the show in a way that she went out and she did things on impulse. More milk, wasn't it? Oh, only if it's no hassle. Oh, look, it's no hassle at all. <laughs> Did you want it here or take away? Did she have any help from Sister Kylie? She gave me a few tips. When I was auditioning for things, I'd go to her and say, oh, please, watch this and, you know, what do you think? So she's really good in that respect. And it was good for me growing up and watching what she went through with neighbours to learn and what to expect when I sort of joined Home and Away. An even more notable capture was Craig McLaughlin, curly-haired heartthrob of Neighbours and another singer seeking international recognition. When Channel 7 made him an offer he couldn't refuse, Neighbours were so displeased at his defection that they sent his character, Henry, not just to Brisbane, but all the way to New Zealand. No, I'm all right. <laughs> It's wonderful being fit and being an actor. Yeah. <laughs> an actor. Just from standing on hmm? He's just lying on the page. Now. Judging by the bored reactions, Craig McLaughlin's own crew are over familiar with his pranks, but hey, ours provided him with a whole new audience. Since I got my new pacemaker, I've been a new man. OK, really? Wet time. Home and Away goes on location three days a week, but the logistics are complicated. For example, the school building is 15 kilometres out of Sydney, the characters' houses are in the studio in the western suburbs, and the beach is actually 40 kilometres away. People of Britain, Willie Kearns. How many cameramen do you know who go through this sort of torture? Willie is not wearing gumboots. He's not wearing yeah, any fine. protective footwear. And yet he'll stay here all day until we get that shot. Because Willie is a professional. Turn around and say good day, Willie. Great. <laughs> On your knees, serfs and women. King Henry's back. In Neighbours, Craig McLaughlin played Henry, the simple but lovable gardener. But he's also remember a pop singer, the leader of a group once tastefully called the Y Fronts. And pop singers need to be noticed. I thought I'd come home and drown myself in the shower. Would you care to join me? Oh, I'm sure you're capable of drowning yourself. So perhaps it was no coincidence that Henry, while remaining lovable, showed ever more of himself to be loved. 
it was funny because we, over the, the weeks, we sort of realized that Craig was wearing less and less. I'm afraid you're going to peel very badly, Henry. Oh, what? All this pain and I'm not even going to end up with a suntan. Oh. Whoever said women were the vainest sex? Mm -hmm. I mean, he was working out, he was looking fabulous. But it was becoming boring. It was as if, you know, the same as Anne Charleston wearing the same dress every day. You know, and, and also you don't necessarily want to watch someone without anything on eating breakfast. What about my dad? In a minute. But, no. What is that thing on the wall? And where's Frog? Where's Frog? Daniel says so, and she's an agent, you know, for artists. One day, just that wall's going to be worth more than this one. The garden's fine, honestly. So we had to sort of try to explain to him that really, if he could wear a bit more, it would be more attractive. Um, and he was good for a while, and then suddenly we got to the overalls without the T-shirt on underneath. But, I mean, that was a compromise we made. I left Neighbours, I had a couple of weeks in the studio with Check One Two to turn the album out and then I was into Home and Away, so the big thing was I had to drop all the Henryisms, And that was part of the fun, you know, Henry had certain characteristics, like he had this ridiculous cackle. <laughs> and things like that, so as soon as in a script I saw that Grant had to laugh, I'd immediately want to break into this, you know, this, this cackle and where are my blue overalls, where's the lawnmower, Bronny, Bronny, Bronny. And of course you can't, you know, you've got to develop all these new characteristics and that's, that's part of the fun. Okay, first up guys, let's just drop this Mr. Mitchell business, okay? Grant, or Mitch, will be fine. Second, the teacher does not always know best, so if you guys think you've got a better way of doing something, I want to hear about it. Third, we're all going to be stuck in the same classroom for the rest of the year, so I recommend deodorant, <laughs> a little mutual respect, that we make learning as much fun as possible. Any questions? The reaction here has been good, like, um, particularly with, with the teenagers who will come up to you in the street and say, oh, you know, oh, I wish we had a teacher like Mr Mitchell. You know, and that sort of, that makes it worthwhile. The shooting schedule on Home and Away is even more demanding than on Neighbours. The scenes are shorter and there are more of them, and that's time-consuming. Yeah, that's right. The show is certainly kid-led, but the older characters still have an important role to play. The adults, among them such veterans as Alf and Elsa, ensure that acceptable teenage rebellion does not descend into unacceptable teenage anarchy. Yeah, well, the yep. after the shot and back, because I'm still feeling for you, Jude. I haven't got over feeling how badly you feel at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Elf's the, probably the nicest bloke you've ever met, Barry. Uh, he said modestly. Um, no, Elf's, Elf's a, a, a knockabout Aussie guy, I guess. He's a uh, hard man but fair. He, um, he says what he thinks. He doesn't mix words, but um, he's fair too. He'll give other people a chance. He usually takes a little bit of shifting once he forms a view. Action. I'm going to try this. I don't want you and Emma having another fight. She's punished herself enough for more than either of us could have. You think she's doing the right thing leaving school? I don't know. He likes to drink a VB. Uh, that's a Victoria yeah, Bitter, a brand of beer we have here. And that's the one that Alf drinks. And um, they say he's a good bloke. Likes a beer on a hot day and never been cold in his life. That's our Alf, you know? Uh, why does somebody always arrive at the door just as the tucker lobs on the table? Uh, Alf's partner, Ailsa, is played by Judy Nunn, who's appeared as sex bombs, bitches or older women in Aussie soaps ranging from prisoner to country practice and sons and daughters. What's the attraction for an actor and actress of being in a soap? Regular money. Simple as that? Uh, no, as I say, that sounds a, a little bit, uh, little bit uh, cold, but creating the character to start with, uh, yes, of the creation of a new of a new series and a new soap, a new program altogether, be it the theatre as well as television or a film, is always very exciting. I think a year down the track, I think the reason one stays then is because of the security in a very insecure business, and also a lot of camaraderie too. I mean, th there's a lot of happy, happy mateship in this show, and that's a nice reason to stay too. If it weren't, I, I wouldn't stay if we weren't the mates that we are actually. <laughs> Yeah. Hey. 
I mean, it is a soapy after all. It's not Shakespeare we're doing. I mean, everybody takes it seriously when they have to. But um, I like it. I like Home and Away. It's a bit rough around the edges, but I mean, you know, we shoot two and a half hours in a week. But, you know, it's, uh, it doesn't take itself seriously. It's not... Um, I don't find it pompous, really. And we all get a lot of fun out of it. At this school in Scunthorpe, history has repeated itself. Just as Alison Grade and her friends used to infest the computer room to watch neighbours, the pupils here shun the boisterous outdoor activities of the playground to catch up on home and away. Just going to ring up and say that I can't make it. Oh, I can't, know because you'll know it's me. You're going to have to do it for me. Me? Yeah. But I sound like a little kid. Oh, just, I don't know, put on a different voice or something. Hold your nose, you know? Like, Hello? I just ran to say the landslide. I can't make it to work today. I reckon I should do that, mate. I reckon you should, eh? When the first date came on, I thought, I'm not going to watch it because everybody was saying it's going to take over neighbours. But then after about a week, someone said it was good, so I started watching it and just always watched it ever since. It's really good. Well, I've been watching it ever since it started, so, um... So, luckily, I've only missed something like um, two weeks when I've been away on holidays and things, but people have told me what's been going on because um, a lot of my classmates watch it as well. Well, it's just good. I mean, once you get into it, you, you just can't... You're, like, addicted to it, I mean, it's just really good. Yeah. You, just, you just can't help not watching it. To get the sort of audience that, that we need in order to uh, survive, uh, survive as a, as a, uh, a viable programme, um, it's very important that that, that screen be vi visually interesting, that those performances be very upfront and very direct. Uh, there's got to be a lot of business, as I keep saying to the directors, it's busy, 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 it's got to move. That screen has got to move. Action! Our directors know they have uh, a certain amount of time to shoot the schedule, and it must be done in that time. There's no question, argument or discussion about it. It must be done. Uh, one more, please. It's a soap, and it's like a sausage factory. Everything goes out very, very quickly. Um, so there's not a lot of time to stop and think about it, especially with this, you know, the scripts. You just you do what you can at the time. It's like working on a on a conveyor. You know, you're on a conveyor about just churning it out. And the the art to it is to keep it different, to keep it fresh, to keep it so full of energy when you've been working for 13 hours and you've just done 14 scenes in a row, you know, and it's like, I've got to keep pulling it out of the hat. The, pe the person at home watching the telly doesn't know that, oh, well, they weren't very good in that scene because that was their 14th scene for the day, you know. How, how do you counteract that, that pressure? What do you do to alleviate it? Oh, I don't really don't know. I'm going to go home and do the housework and the washing, really. I just find there isn't a great deal of time to do anything else except chores and neighbours. I read when I get a chance. Or throw my feet up, pour myself a glass of champagne and listen to some music and think, oh, God, you know, what a relief. <laughs> but your social life must suffer because you don't have that much time for your friends. What did you say, social life? You've heard of social life? Well, I remember. <laughs> no, there isn't much of a social life. For the cast of both shows, there are very few days off. Even weekends are spent making public appearances, drumming up interest in the series and themselves. Most of them will merely fulfil Andy Warhol's prediction that one day everyone will be famous for 15 minutes, but at least they will have been famous. Guys will come up to me and they say, aren't you Paul Robinson from Neighbours? And I say, no. They say, yes, you are. And I say, well, what did you ask for if you knew? The other day I was driving along the street, I was about to do some shopping, and the car had, I stopped the car at naturally a stoplight, and this man walked across in front of me, and he saw me in the car, and he came right up to my window and went, mm -hmm. and I thought, oh, isn't that lovely? <laughs> Bob Castro is unique, a black Englishman in Ramsey Street. It's being black that makes him unique. There are no Australian Aborigines in Ramsey Street or in Summer Bay, come to that. There aren't many Greeks or Italians either, though both nationalities are strongly represented down under. The Australia of the Daily Soaps is comfortably, reassuringly Anglo-Saxon. 
Okay, kids, come on. <laughs> oh, wow, what if that was just... <laughs> we have had residents of Ramsey Street who have been ethnic and we have done ethnic stories in Ramsey Street, yes. But they seem to pass on fairly quickly. <laughs> well, I suppose they do, yes. <laughs> and it's the wasps who remain. Yes. Mm. It's, I mean, is that deliberate or is it the way it's happened? Oh, it's just happened like that, frankly, you know. While Britain is still enraptured by the novelty of daily soaps, the Australians, who were ahead of us in enthusiasm, are now ahead of us in disenchantment. Familiarity there has bred, well, lack of interest. Home and away isn't as good as neighbours, really. It's, it tend, I mean, they're both um, reasonably unrealistic, but home and away is more unrealistic than neighbours. I just hate neighbours. Yeah, I watch neighbours. Yeah, I've been watching it since the start. What do you like about it? Well, I find, um, personally, it uh, relates a little bit to life in uh, you know, the neighbourhood. It's not a big thing anymore. Like, when it first came out, everyone discussed it, but not anymore. It's just not a big thing. I mean, like, we sometimes discuss Home and Away, but never really neighbours. Now, what's your attitude towards neighbours and Home and Away? Um, my attitude is that um, it's a load of rubbish. I think a lot of people think that it's an intellectual put-down, if you admit to watching a serial or a soap opera, or whatever. Um, you know, there's no reason why you, you can't watch World in Action and Neighbours and enjoy both of them. There's absolutely no reason. I mean, it's a genre, it, and that's all it is. You can also take it all too seriously. Hmm? There's no point in sitting there analysing Neighbours. Analyse World in Action, but just sit and let Neighbours wash over you, enjoy it. That's what it's there for. Yes, but that's probably true of any reasonably well-made soap. The question is, what is it about Neighbours and Home and Away that's given them such a remarkable hold over British audiences? The characters, the stories, the settings, the action, or lack of it, their very Australianness, or maybe something else? The success of Neighbours um, and Home and Away um, has little to do with the fact that it is Australian. It has everything to do that it is shown Monday to Friday, every day, because the nature of the type of show it is, um, it is designed for regular viewing, habit forming. Um, as, you know, it's a it's a hum, harmless type of drug. It, it, it's a breadstick here, pull the other one. Little bit of there is an explanation. <laughs> Like any other soap opera, Neighbours and Home and Away are intellectual hamburgers, verbal music with moving pictures. Their only real significance is that they've nudged aside the popular image of Australia as a nation of jolly swagmen and big bronzed sheilas in bikinis. The Australia of the soaps owes more to Dame Edna than to Crocodile Dundee. In Ramsey Street and Summer Bay, the people are as likely as the average pom to wimp about whinging and agonising over minor domestic crises and teenage growing pains. By and large, they live just like us, but with one vital difference. According to the soaps, Australians always do it in the sunshine. Well, nearly always. 